found in her apartment shot 12 times. Oh my God. No. Her baby is there crying oh as well. And apparently the baby had been left alone this entire time. So imagine you have a sister and she's a pretty popular TikToker and YouTuber. As a matter of fact, her and her baby father have a YouTube channel together, TikTok together where they make couple videos. Okay. Everybody think, loves them. Everybody thinks they're happy together. But one day she's found in her apartment shot 12 times. Oh my God. Your first instinct is to try to figure out what's going on, but also let her boyfriend know what's going on because right. you got to be the one to break the news to him. So you break the news to him, fast forward, he comes to the funeral, but then you find out that he was actually the kid. So this is the story of Ramaya Griffin. She was a 20 year old TikToker slash YouTuber. Her and her boyfriend had just had a baby together. And the story of how this all unfolded is crazy. So Ramaya Griffin was a 20 year old from Pittsburgh. Now her and her boyfriend had been together for about four years. His name was Ntangwa, right? Now Ntangwa and her had a dope relationship. They were known for posting these relationship videos and creating content together. They were very prolific. They ended up starting a YouTube channel okay. together. It was a pretty beautiful relationship. Now along that time, Ramaya ends up getting pregnant she ends up getting pregnant and then unfortunately they ended up breaking up now they ended up breaking up but they started planning on co-parents now no one in their family knew anything was wrong because you know Itagra would come to all the events he was welcomed everybody loved him their relationship on social media looked so perfect but apparently that wasn't the case so on February 9th 2024 the police were called at 4 30 p.m to the 5400 block of Young Ridge Drive they get there and they find Ramaya's body he sh 12 times in her apartment and her baby oh. is there crying oh. as well and apparently the baby had been left alone with Ramaya this entire time after the shoot luckily the baby was one and she was unharmed but the police found 16 shell casings in the home several neighbors tell channel 11 detectives on scene friday night told them griffin was shot 12 times around 3 a.m friday it was the only time anyone reported to police that they heard a gun being fired most people said despite the close units they heard nothing Multiple neighbors said homicide detectives did not discover Griffin's body until 4.30 p.m., adding that Griffin's one-year-old daughter was in the apartment with her mom's body for more than 13 hours. One neighbor in tears told Channel 11 off-camera she heard a baby crying for a long time and had an eerie feeling about it. Just the baby being down there, I think that's just... I, that's just horrible. Now, investigators immediately got to work on this case. They were extremely motivated to figure out who did this, and they realized that the shooting had to have occurred somewhere around 3.30 a.m., right? Because that was the first time that anybody said that they heard any shot. Okay. Now, due to their investigation, they started going through footage, surveillance cameras in the area, and they found out that the baby's father, Tagua, was the one that was the actual killer. The ex-boyfriend and the father of the child who happened to be 22. But the story of how he planned and tried to pull this off is crazy. So apparently, Antagua is a truck driver and he was on his way to North Carolina when the police reached out to him. He had mentioned that he had been with Romaya and the baby on the morning of February 8th, but departed that evening for a scheduled delivery trip to North Carolina. He stated that he reached Cheswick around 7 p.m. to collect his freight, but did not depart until approximately 1045 after loading his truck. Now, the GPS records from the trucking company showed that the truck spent about 10 minutes at Ramaya's apartment around 12 a.m., arrived in Monroeville just before 1 a.m., and then was parked in McKee's Rocks for 2.5 hours. Investigators asked Antagua why he hadn't mentioned that he had parked in McKee's Rocks for 2.5 hours, and he said that he intended to stop for gas at a speedway, but discovered he couldn't use the company credit card there when he pulled over and because his truck was having issues and took a nap. It sounded like the man had multiple lives. He couldn't pick one. My car not working. I'm tired. I want to take a nap. Couldn't and use my, my truck. Card. All of that, right? Oh. So the police immediately checked with the station there was no issues with the car readers there was no issues with the truck according to the company there was no text messages between him and the company about any of these things that he discussed mm -hmm. and it seemed like that he was the only suspect mm -hmm. that didn't have an alibi and could have done this and also again we had surveillance footage so using license plate reader technology so using license plate reader technology investigators focused on a Hyundai Sonata with stolen plates tracked from McKee's Rocks in South Hills and back on the night of the reported gun now this is crazy the car was owned by Ramaya's mother and Ramaya had access as well as Antangua. And the car had been tampered with around 2.15 a.m. on the morning of the march. It was later found with a mismatched license plate and gun residue in the oh car. Authorities God. had all the evidence they needed to arrest him. They ended up picking him up and taking him to jail. But this is the craziest part. So before this came out, no one knew that he was the killer, right? And again, Ramaya's sister was the one that told him about what happened. And he went to the funeral with the family. The disrespect. This is her talking about it. I felt angry because 
like I said, you 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 knew what you did, and for you to reach out, it's like, what 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 are you trying to cover? You you thought that you were gonna get away with killing my sister. Mariah Griffin says her sister Remy and Adeline Atongwa were together about four years. In this picture, the two expecting parents were all smiles. Sometime after their daughter was born, they separated, yet maintained what Mariah thought was a civil relationship in the spirit of co-parenting. What happens behind closed doors really don't get spoke of much, but you know, there were some things that I've heard and it, you know, kind of raised an eyebrow. Mariah described Atongwa as a shady person and controlling, but she respected the fact that her sister still had love for him. And the night she found out Remy had been killed, Mariah said Atongwa needed to know as soon as possible. He was sounding normal, so I, in my head, I'm like, he doesn't know what happened. So I, I didn't want to be, to tell, be the one to tell him what happened. Looking back, it's like he knew what happened. The news of Atongwa's arrest reached Mariah today as she and her mom were on their way to a custody hearing for Remy's daughter. Now Mariah's even more determined to ensure her niece is placed in the right home, one that is a reflection of the love Remy embodied. So it was one thing for him to do it, which was already, of course, crazy, but for him to continue contact with the family, to go to the funeral, mm. to act like that, like he really thought that he was going to be able to deceive them after the fact. But what bothers me is, for one, to sh her 12 times. What made you that angry? Like, what was your motivation to sh her 12 times to do this in the presence of your daughter even if it wasn't right before the baby's eyes the baby was there you did this in front of your own child and then to leave your daughter there with her mother's deceased body and then to leave for her alone for 13 hours is crazy and you just hope that she, somebody comes along at some point or maybe he didn't care like this is one of the most horrible stories that I've ever heard of the thing that I hate about these stories when we cover them is when we don't know like have more information because the victim isn't here and because so much stuff does happen behind closed doors because you really don't know what led up to this what she was enduring before that did she have any clue that he was capable of this you know apparently her family didn't really know that and then you just have her just come up missing this guy just brutally takes her life and just decides out of the blue one day when y'all broken up y'all not even really dealing with each other no more like what could push you to this level and so, he had some sort of plan which makes it premeditated exactly like, so you didn't just get mad in the moment the, you mm -hmm. took the word right out of my mouth this wasn't like a crime of passion or in the moment where y'all had a heated argument and then just boom 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 or it doesn't sound like he was defending himself it sound like you know what i'm done with her i'm about to take her out let me go park this truck let me go take this car and drive back put the car back go get back in my truck and just be on my way throw my hands up like nothing happened and then the sister's thinking oh i've got to tell him right away and he already knows exactly he's sitting there playing the whole family and then the audacity and I guess you know looking at it from a perspective of someone that is trying to cover up what they did but the fact that you went to the funeral knowing what you did and tried to play nice and be like Chills. it's wild it's wild and you never know what people are truly capable of and that's the reason why we have to talk about these stories and encourage people to be more vocal in these situations because you never know when that information will be important and her family had no clue that, that he was this type of guy if it wasn't for the that. investigators doing their job they didn't know. They didn't think about him. His sister called him to tell him. That's one thing my mother always taught me. She said, you know, because a lot of people are like, oh, what goes on in our house stays in our mm -hmm. house. What goes on? And I understand that to a certain degree. If you are being stalked, if you are being threatened, if you feel unsafe with your partner, somebody, at least one person needs to know what's going on so that if something does happen to you, there's at least some point of reference or they have an idea of who possibly could have done this because her sister, she was like oh he was shady and controlling and I've heard a couple things but she didn't really know if there was something and it sounds like maybe there was and but she will never know for sure exactly and looking back of course once you have the information yeah he's shady and controlling but you didn't think about that ahead of time because you were worried about telling them so whatever your threat level was it was so far below what you thought was even possible she you know what I'm saying never even, it never even occurred to her that he might be the one exactly. to have done this exactly. and then in such a fashion I'm sorry my mind is blown about the baby being left there. It's unfortunate. As we get more updates, it seems like he has been arrested. He was charged and is now serving his time. It's an unfortunate story and we send well wishes to the family because no one should ever have to go through that.